Today is Friday, November 5th. We'll tell you the new details and deadline for President Biden's vaccine mandate. It'll impact two-thirds of American workers. Also, remember the so-called Steele dossier? A key source for it was just arrested. Plus, what new research shows about the HPV vaccine. Which two big city mayors are all in on Bitcoin? And it's that time again. What you need to know about our clocks falling back this weekend. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. We'll start today with new rules that are about to impact two-thirds of American workers. U.S. companies with 100 or more employees now have a deadline to comply with the federal government's new COVID-19 vaccine and testing requirements. The White House revealed companies have until January 4th, so after the holidays, but that's still in less than two months. The companies will need to make sure their workers are either vaccinated against COVID-19, or if they're not, those workers will have to wear masks and be tested for COVID-19 weekly. The companies do not necessarily have to pay for those tests. If they don't go along with the new mandate, they'll face hefty federal fines. We're talking almost $14,000 for each employee who breaks the rule. Also part of the mandate, starting December 5th, companies will have to give their workers paid time off to get vaccinated and sick leave to recover from the side effects. The Biden administration says because of these rules, more than 250,000 hospitalizations will be avoided and that the mandate will keep workers healthier, businesses safer, and the economy running smoothly. Some unions and labor advocates also say it's better than having a bunch of different laws in different states. But this plan is also facing a lot of opposition. 24 states and several business groups have told the administration they plan to sue, calling the mandate government overreach. And one small business advocacy group already filed a lawsuit yesterday, hoping to block the requirements. It says the federal government does not have the authority to issue these rules and that it will make the labor shortage even worse. The White House expects the rules to withstand legal challenges. So for now, at least, January 4th is still the deadline. The U.S. Justice Department is now suing Texas again. This time, it's over a controversial new voting law. You know the one. It led to months of political drama. Dozens of Texas Democratic lawmakers fled their state, so a vote on the bill would have to be delayed. But eventually, it passed anyway and has since become a law in Texas. The measure did away with things like drive through voting, late-night voting, and Sunday morning early voting. It also gave partisan poll watchers more access. And that's just a few of the changes. Republicans have said the law is needed to make elections more secure in the state. But Democrats have argued it will discourage Texans from voting at all. And now the Justice Department agrees with them. The lawsuit says these changes will especially hurt voters who speak limited English, as well as older voters, those with disabilities, and deployed members of the U.S. military. So the federal government is asking a judge to block the state law. The Texas governor, though, is not too worried. He tweeted, quote, bring it. And he again said, quote, in Texas, it is easier to vote, but harder to cheat. So it looks like we'll see this play out in court. A key source for the so-called Steele dossier is now being charged with lying to the FBI. And this means many salacious reports about former President Trump from four years ago are being further called into question. To recap, the dossier, meaning collection of memos, was put together in 2016 by former British intelligence officer Christopher Steele. And Steele's main source was a Russian analyst named Igor Danchenko. The dossier claimed Russia had compromising information on then-President Trump. Trump has always denied nearly every claim made in the dossier, but the allegations about him have been circulating ever since because the FBI ended up using the dossier to support its investigation into Trump's 2016 presidential campaign and Russian interference. Well, fast forward to this week, and the Russian source, Igor Danchenko, was arrested for lying to the FBI about his part in the dossier. The new charges say a lot of his information was not actually collected from Russia, but that instead it was based on chatter and gossip circulating from American political sources. In fact, they say Steele's entire dossier was paid for by people in American political circles, both Republican and Democrat, who opposed President Trump's run for president. As of this morning, neither Steele nor Danchenko have commented on the new charges. One thing that is important to note, though, even though this was one of the things that inspired special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation into President Trump's Russian ties, these new charges don't actually change any of Mueller's findings. Today, former Secretary of State Colin Powell is being laid to rest. Powell will go down in history as the first black chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the first black Secretary of State. He served both Democratic and Republican presidents in times of war and times of peace. 
Remember, Powell died last month from complications from COVID-19. He also had multiple myeloma, which is a form of blood cancer that can weaken the immune system. He was 84. Today, a memorial service is being held at the Washington National Cathedral. It's one of the most recognizable Episcopal churches in the country. President Biden and First Lady Jill Biden are expected to be there, along with other military and congressional leaders. It's an invitation-only event, but it is going to be live-streamed and televised for people to watch from home. The memorial service starts at noon Eastern time. A new once-a-decade report is urging NASA to take the steps necessary to help answer big questions like, is there life on another planet? And does Earth have a twin? One of the highest priorities in this new report is for NASA to fund and build a massive telescope, 100 times more sensitive than any telescope being used right now. And then find and study Earth-like planets around sun-like stars to see if there are any signs of life. Other main goals from the report include the study of black holes and the growth and evolution of galaxies. A group of independent advisors put this report together at the request of NASA and other government science agencies. And while it's causing some excitement, all of the initiatives still face plenty of technical challenges and would need the support of Congress. More news is coming up, but first, thanks to our sponsor, Ritual. When it comes to something that I put in my body every single day, I want to know that I can trust the ingredients and that it's doing what it's supposed to do. That's why I appreciate that Ritual has invested in gold standard university-led research for its vitamins. For example, Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin was shown to increase vitamin D levels and omega-3 DHA levels in 12 weeks, helping to fill common nutrient gaps in the diets of women ages 18 and up. It's formulated with nutrients to help support brain health, bone health, blood health, and provide antioxidant support. Ritual has also committed to third-party testing from places like the Non-GMO Project. So all of that makes me feel great about taking Ritual vitamins as part of my daily routine. On top of that, Ritual's vitamins are fresh tasting and they never upset my stomach. They're also convenient. I only need to take two pills once a day. And when I'm ready for more, my vitamins show up at my doorstep so I never run out. And right now, Ritual is offering the Newsworthy listeners 10% off your first three months. Just visit ritual.com slash newsworthy and turn healthy habits into a ritual. That's 10% off at ritual.com slash newsworthy. Researchers are calling it a historic moment. A new study in the UK is providing the first real-world data on the HPV vaccine. It shows the vaccine has slashed cervical cancer rates by up to 87%. Cervical cancer is the fourth most common cancer affecting women across the world, and it's caused by the human papillomavirus, known as HPV. So when women go and get regular pap smears, doctors are looking for precancerous cell changes, usually caused by HPV, that can turn into cancer. But the HPV vaccine can help prevent that. Researchers say the vaccine is most effective when given to young preteens and teens before they're sexually active. And age made a difference in this study. For example, the teens who got the vaccine while they were 16 to 18 years old later saw cervical cancer rates lowered by 34%. While for the youngest group, 12 to 13-year-olds, the vaccine lowered cancer rates by 87%. Researchers now believe, thanks to this vaccine, cervical cancer will eventually become a rare disease. More and more people are hopping on the Bitcoin bandwagon, including a couple of American mayors. First, Miami, Florida's mayor said he would take his next paycheck 100% in Bitcoin. Then New York City's new mayor-elect, Eric Adams, one-upped him, saying he would take his next three paychecks in Bitcoin when he formally takes office next year. They're sending not-so-subtle messages to companies that they're crypto-friendly. Mayor Adams followed up on Twitter by saying, quote, NYC is going to be at the center of the cryptocurrency industry and other fast-growing innovative industries. Just wait. So far, though, Miami seems to have a leg up. Startups, venture firms, and crypto exchanges have been relocating to that city, and crypto-related conferences have been held there. Earlier this year, Miami's mayor, Francis Suarez, also announced his city would accept tax payments in Bitcoin and let employees draw their salary in it. So now that Adams has been elected, it seems they're in for some friendly competition. Still, Bitcoin is considered highly volatile. The National Toy Hall of Fame has three new additions. They were all honored in a ceremony this week. The new Hall of Famers are American Girl Dolls, the strategy board game Risk, and what's considered perhaps the most universal and oldest toy in the world, sand. Yes, like sand at the beach. 
Anyone can nominate a toy to be considered, but it's up to a panel of experts to vote on which toys make the cut based on three main factors. One, they've withstood the tests of time and memory. Two, they've changed play or toy design in some way. And three, these should be toys that foster learning, creativity, or discovery. Now all the honorees are going on display in the Strong Museum of Play in Rochester, New York. It's that time. Time to turn your clocks back before you go to bed on Saturday night. Or at least be aware that your smartphone will automatically change. Because we fall back an hour at 2 a.m. on Sunday. It means you could get an extra hour of sleep that night if you want, or maybe even choose to reset and become more of a morning person. But it also means it'll be getting dark earlier in the evenings. It's the end of daylight saving time in most of the country. Hawaii and Arizona, though, are the only two states that do not observe daylight saving time at all, as well as some territories like Puerto Rico, so no time change in those places this weekend. That's it for the main news today, but now it's time for Feel Good Friday, when we bring you one extra feel good or positive news story before the weekend. But first, this episode is brought to you by KiwiCo. The holidays are all about coming together with loved ones and taking an active role in creating the magic of the season. Yes, you could buy things like ornaments, for example, but isn't building your own so much more fun and rewarding? This year, KiwiCo wants to invite you and your family to make the holidays a little less prepackaged and a little more hands-on, all while learning a thing or two along the way. Our family has loved getting KiwiCo crates in the mail. We continue to get new, exciting, and high-quality toys that were chosen by the experts for my son's specific age and development. And I already have KiwiCo on my gift list for my niece, who is several years older than my son, and I know she will especially love getting mail that is just for her. She'll also love KiwiCo's real engineering, science, and art projects each month. This holiday, don't just teach kids how to buy. Teach them how to build. Give them a gift of a hands-on holiday with a KiwiCo subscription and celebrate a love for hands-on learning all year long. Get 50% off your first month plus free shipping on any crate line with code NEWSWORTHY at KiwiCo.com. That's 50% off your first month at K-I-W-I-C-O, KiwiCo.com with the promo code NEWSWORTHY. Now back to Feel Good Friday. Two middle school students are being hailed as heroes for helping to save their bus driver. Connor Doss and Kane Doherty were on a crowded bus on their way to school outside Atlanta when their bus driver, Miss Julie, had a medical emergency. Connor says he saw Miss Julie's face was bright red and she was shaking. She managed to pull over even though she could barely communicate. So the boys ran up to her and Kane picked up the dispatch radio. Thankfully, the dispatcher was able to help him find the emergency brake, flashing lights, and emergency stop arm. Meanwhile, Connor helped to calm down the other kids. Both boys then opened up the bus windows to wave down passing cars. They got the attention of a pastor who happened to be driving by. He hopped on and prayed with the children until an ambulance showed up. Miss Julie is now recovering from a heart procedure, but she has not returned to work just yet. The district recently recognized the boys' bravery and actions at a school board meeting. We'll be back tomorrow with our special edition Saturday episode. We're chatting with a former Facebook employee about recent controversies, and she tells us what she witnessed while working at the world's most popular social media platform. Then we'll be back on Monday with your next news roundup. For now, thanks so much for listening. Have a great day. 